Today, I want to talk about an interesting topic that actually came up from a friend of mine. So a friend of mine asked this interesting question about functions that look like this, which are convex functions. So they always have this cup going upward. And we'll make a concrete definition of what that actually means. So on the left, we have a function that's convex. And here we have a function that's not convex. And you might notice something interesting about this particular function. You notice that it has two local minima. And this local minimum is not a global minimum. The global minimum for this function, if it extended to infinity on both these sides, happens to be right at this point right over here. However, in the convex function, we only have one local minimum, and that local minimum is a global minimum. So my friend asked, if you have a convex function, does a local minimum have to actually be a global minimum? And if so, how would you actually argue that it has to be? The thing that's tricky with this is a lot of times when we think about convexity, we think of functions that are actually smooth like this, that have second derivatives, and you can do something with second derivatives to say something about local minimums being forced to be global. However, convex functions can look something like this. And we still have that the only local minimum, which is right here, is a global minimum. So how do we talk about this concretely and actually give a proof of this fact? We'll need two things. One is to talk about what convexity is and then what an actual local minimum is and then group these together in order to give a concrete reason why this is actually true. So to start, we should have a working definition of what a convex function is. And I intentionally drew an example that's not differentiable. We notice that we have these two points that would cause problems for differentiability. And the reason why I introduced these is so we have a concrete working definition that avoids the necessity of talking about derivatives. So let's get a sense of what this ought to be. So let's say we pick two points, x and y, and look at the outputs of those points. So these points on the graph are y, f of y, and x, f of x. Now the whole idea be about being convex is that this region above the graph never dips into something like this. We don't have these sort of like holes here. Um, so how do we talk about that concretely? Well, we can look at the line segment between these two points, x, y, x f at x, and y, f at y. Now, if we take any intermediate point, call it z or z, then we have two things we can consider. One is the point right over here, which is the point on the graph, which is z or z, f of z. Then we have this other point, which is on the line segment between x, f of x, and y, f of y. And we need to talk about that concretely. z itself is on the line segment between x and y. So we can actually write it as tx plus one minus ty, where t is a value between zero and one. For example, if z was right at the middle of the line segment between x and y, then t would be a half. So we'd have a half x plus a half y. That would be the average of the two points. However, if it was somewhere like here, it would be like 3 quarters x plus a quarter y. It would be halfway through between x and the midpoint of x and y. And any general point on this line segment can be represented in this way. So that means this point on this graph is tx plus 1 minus ty and f at that value, f at tx plus 1 minus ty. Okay, but what about this point right over here? If this function is convex, the geometry that we're seeing is that this point on the line segment between these two points should lie above this point right over here. The coordinates of this point, because of the scaling, are tx plus 1 minus ty, and then a scaling of these two coordinates here by these t and 1 minus t values. 
which is t f of x plus 1 minus t f of y. Okay, so for a function to be convex, we need always that this y coordinate here is greater than or equal to this y coordinate here. So we can now state this concretely. F is convex if no matter what two points x and y you select in the real numbers and value t between 0 and 1, the function value evaluated at tx plus 1 minus ty is less than or equal to t f of x plus 1 minus t f of y. Now again, to get back to the intuition of this, imagine t was a half. Then we're saying here that f at a half x plus half y, meaning f at the midpoint of these, that might be here, is less than or equal to a half of x plus a half of y, which is this point right here in this y coordinate. Okay, so let's go back and actually see why local mins for convex functions are forced to be global mins now that we have a working definition of what a convex function is. All right, we need to go back to the idea of what a local minimum is in the first place. So if you pick a point x, it's a local minimum if you can find a little neighborhood around it so that this function value at this point is smallest among all the points inside of this interval. Okay, so to make this special, let's call this x star, and we'll say x star is a local min. Then we can find a small interval length, let's call it delta, greater than zero, so that f of y is greater than or equal to f of x star for every y inside of this interval whose length is delta. So every y in the interval between x star minus delta and x star plus delta. So it's that small neighborhood we get that f of x star is a minimum. Now I want to know why x star actually is a global minimum. So say we picked another point z far, far, far away. For some reason, it's going to be forced to be the case that the function value at z is greater than or equal to the function value at x star. So the motivation is, since we know something about points on the line segment between these and their function value, what we'll do is pick a point between these two values x star and z that's inside of this neighborhood. And so it's going to be something whose value when evaluated at f is at least f of x star. But together with the convexity relation, we're going to be able to say something about f of z. Okay, so we'll let z be arbitrary, some real number. Then there is some value of t. And I'm going to make t strictly between 0 and 1. So it's not going to give us a point that's x star or z itself. So that x t times x star plus 1 minus t z is in this interval right over here. Right, the idea is we have x star here, z here. We pick a t ever so large so that it's very, very close to x star. So it's in the interval x star minus delta, x star plus delta. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that f of t x star plus 1 minus t z, this point that is in this interval, because x star is a local min, is going to be greater than the value of f of x star. But at the same time, because of our convexity, this value here is less than or equal to t f of x star plus 1 minus t f of z. 
So we have that t f of x star plus 1 minus t f of z is at least f of x star. And if we rearrange, that tells us 1 minus t f of z is at least 1 minus t f of x star. And now because 1 minus t is between 0 and 1, because t itself was between 0 and 1, we can divide these two values out and get exactly the conclusion we wanted, that f of z is at least f of x star. So the motivation and idea behind this is, in a convex function, any local minimum is a minimum in a small interval. But because anytime you pick a point, you can find a point on the line segment between that and x star to force it to be inside of this very small interval, Convexity will allow you to establish that the function value at that point is actually greater than or equal to the function value at that local minimum, making that local minimum actually a global minimum.